Alright, so in this video it's going to be a guide going over hacking and the uh, purpose of this video is afterwards you should have a uh, pretty good understanding of how hacking works and kind of how to operate and kind of navigate through this mini game. Data relic sites um, are exploration sites that are found through combat scanning and uh, more specifically relic sites have a pretty good amount of value that comes out of them in, a, in terms of uh, blue salvage. I um, average anywhere between like 10 to 50 million for a site and they don't take very long to run. We usually run them with a, um, a ship that can run a probe scanner obviously and then a data or relic analyzer and then a, some sort of a prop mod because the nodes are actually pretty far apart. So whenever you get to the data or relic site you'll have these nodes and what you'll want to do is you want to target one. Once you have the nodes selected what you'll do is you'll use your analyzer on it. Now you will fail this node if you run out of coherence or you move out of range or you you know detarget it or whatever the case may be. You have basically two attempts of two or you have two attempts at this. If you fail twice then it'll explode and you won't get the loot. So you'll go ahead and get in a range of it which is uh, 6,000 meters and you'll open it up. This is the uh, map that we have to basically navigate to try to find the system score. This is our strength, which is basically our attack, and this is our coherence, which is a, essentially our health, which is 120, and we have 40 attack right now. Every time you click on an empty node, you'll see a number pop up. That was a 2, so we know that there is a data cache, a utility item, or the system core within two spaces of this, right? So now we click again. We know we're going in the right direction and show a 1, so that means either two of these spots is going to be one of those items. So this is a defensive system. Just like us, it has a health which is coherence and then a attack which is strength so we're going to click it until it clears so that gave us a one as well which means that you know it's our you know positive item our system core our data cache or our um our utility item can be in any one of these spots so we just kind of keep moving so we know that was a one as well so there it is we have this this item is a secondary vector. We'll be able to actually click on a defensive system and kind of not, we don't have to necessarily click on it again. We can kind of move in a different direction and it'll like do up to three attacks on it. So we'll save that. So that's a five. So we probably don't want to go down in this direction too far. So we're going to go back up here. That's a four. We'll probably punch through this. We're going to use this on there. You see it's doing attacks. That was a two. It's best practice to try to clear everything that comes on the board just so it doesn't like, you know, overwhelm you. So as you can see here, we have 40 health coherence left. Essentially, we have 40 attack. This is the system score and the red means it's, you know, a very, this has been a very hard node and the difficulty um, basically means that there's different, all the types of uh, defensive subsystems are present here, but we managed to navigate it um, pretty easily. We're going to have, it's only going to do 210 damage to us every time we click it. So we can basically get four attacks on it. So we should be able to get it in three clicks. And then that would be a clear, right? And then you can go over here and select the target. And then you can um, loot it. And this would be your blue loot, which is what I always take. These enhanced wards are really, really good. They're uh, really high value. And so, you know, you'll know that this node is done because it'll show like an empty box there. And so basically you can just go to the next node. So we'll do it again. You'll get a lot faster the more practice you get, but uh, I'll run through quite a bit of these just so that you can kind of see different um, different scenarios because each map is is different. So we'll go and open this up. And so we got a five. There's a five, so we probably don't want to go in that direction. These guys, this is a restoration node, and these guys are high priority. You definitely want to take these down the second they come on the board. What they're going to do is every turn, they're going to give a random defensive subsystem um, more coherence and so it can really get out of hand quickly so we definitely want to like take care of that we're still showing five so we're gonna try to change direction so we see four up here so it could be three two one or it could be three two one so we're gonna just try to like you know make our best choice in direction these are data caches I usually don't open these until we actually need them <clears throat> Because data caches can actually um, have utility items or they can have a defensive sub subsystem in them. So you don't want to actually like end up screwing yourself over. Because if you click this, it's going to open up. If it, Let's say we click this and it opens up a defensive subsystem. It's going to lock off these paths until we clear it. 
So we just want to leave that alone until we 100% need it. Here's another utility item. This is a kernel um, rot. And what this is going to do is it's going to half the coherence of any defensive subsystem we use it on. So that's you know nifty to have around. And this is one of the best items right here. This is a self-repair. Every time you get a self-repair, you want to use it immediately. And what that's going to do is every turn for three turns, it's going to give you um, eight coherence. So we're going to go and click that. And there's no max on the coherence you can have, right? And see that we just popped up one right there. We can't get it because uh, we were clicking too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, kernel rot. And I'm going to half the coherence on here. That way we can get it in one shot. And then we'll go ahead and self-repair with that. And now we're just kind of following the numbers, right? And there's the system core. We just click on that and we cleared it. So that one's done. Got some more loot there. I usually just target all these that I can, um, just so I kind of keep track of everything. And so we'll go to the next one. We'll just kind of run through the whole site. Just so you can guys kind of see the, the process yeah, kind of in real world scenario. All right, so we'll bring it up again. So this one started, we got self repair at the beginning right there, it's good. And so we'll kind of go in this direction, it's four, three, so it's probably in this direction. It's a one. So that one was basically pointing to that data cache. So now we're kind of following the numbers again. Go and clear this. Uh, go here. Clear this subsystem. Now we're just kind of hunting, hunting around. All right, there's a kernel rot. Which we can use on the subsystem here, and once you know how like that, once you know how the numbers work and like what all everything means, it um it becomes super easy. So now we'll go to the next one, and this is actually a pretty good um, data site. This one had seven nodes in it. We'll go ahead and go down. It usually takes just one rotation on the micro warp drive. You just want to be careful not to run out of range. Um, with a bounce coming in with the warp drive because if you come out of range then you will fail the attempt so see a one there two there's a kernel rot we'll use it on this just to kind of save our coherence a little bit all right all those nodes look pretty rough there's a self-repair kind of hunting so it could be in this direction probably try to clear all these there's the system core and that node is done I usually leave the carbon here. Um, I'll take the metal, scrap metal. Uh, for relic sites, I'm 100% after this um, salvage though. That's really what you're kind of after for the whole thing. <clears throat> and it's the same process, right? Like if you're doing a data site, then you're doing the same mini game with you know nodes just like this. You're just getting different types of loot. So this video essentially covers both data and relic sites, even though we're just doing a relic site right now. All right, so we just bounced off the target. We'll go ahead and start it up. This map looks pretty good. Okay, it's five. We're gonna try to go up this way so we're doing a little bit better. That's a one, so that's a self repair. And you, like you always want to use the self repairs immediately because, like I said, there's no cap on your coherence, and so having it early is better than not having it at all. There's another self repair. We don't have to use that data cache. I almost never have to use data caches. Um, if I back myself into a corner on a particularly difficult map then you know I have them kind of available but it could go either way it could go 50 50 green means this is one of the yeah, very easy or easy uh, node that doesn't really affect loot it just affects what defensive systems actually uh, show up all right so we got two nodes left we'll go ahead and, and you'll see once we clear the last node or once it's like let's say you go on the last node and you fail the first attempt once you start the second attempt then the warp wool will actually disappear because it the system knows that if you if you fail that attempt it's gonna be you know that's gonna be it anyway. So that's all we do. We just kinda go, we're just, you know, go from one node to another, kinda box everything out, kinda get a good idea of our bearings. Just remember restoration nodes, those things right there, take them down the second you see them. Because if you let them hang around, it could cost you an attempt. We try not to, let's see, we're going to use this uh, secondary vector on that since we're kind of running a little bit low on coherence. We're going to put that there. Another thing you don't want to do too is like, let's say you find the system node and you have like a um, secondary vector. You don't want to necessarily clear around the system's core. 
because if this is a defensive subsystem around here, you could lock off the system core and you could actually mean a failed attempt if you're already low coherence. So since we have like that going down there, we're gonna go up in an opposite direction and then we can click it to finish it off. Got metal scraps on that one. And so now we just have one left, which we'll go ahead and make our way towards. This ship moves like 2,400 meters a second, which is pretty good for doing this kind of thing. We just want to watch our bounce. This ship usually doesn't bounce that far. Even if we're going full speed. All right, we'll open this one up. This will be the last one for the site. And you can go fast <clears throat> if you want. Another thing you can do too is if you equip a cargo scanner, you can actually see what's in the node before you even attempt to hack it, which is pretty nifty. But in my experience, I rather just, you know, take everything. Even the non-blue loot, just even the regular salvage can be good. We'll save that kernel rot until we find something. All right, three. All right, this is um, this is a virus suppressor. These are actually high, um, you know a high priority as well. And what these will do is they're going to lower your strength. So they're going to lower the amount of damage that you do to nodes. So we are going to use this kernel rot on here. Actually, it didn't go. <laughs> yeah, I already had it clicked, and then uh, it didn't work out. So now we're just kind of hunting around. This one might be pretty difficult. We might not be able to get all the defensive subsystems down. We just have to like kind of pick where we need to go here. I think we need to clear this. There we go. There it is. So now we have to look at this too. This is 90. It's going to take 90 strength to take it down. It's going to do 10 to us. So we can take three hits, but we need to do three hits. <laughs> so we're going to actually look at some of these... Uh, all right, that's a restoration, two restoration nodes, not great. All right, we'll get it. Yeah, we got it. You saw the restoration nodes, two of them are just gonna pump up each other and it just gets insane after a while. That's why, this is a really good, this is a really good, uh, like these enhanced wards are what you're going after, right? This is a really good relic site. And as you can see, now the work pool is done because the relic site is done. And uh, that's it, <clears throat> hacking's pretty easy. And obviously, like, there's skills associated with it, hacking and archaeology and stuff like that. And those skills will help increase your starting um, coherence. Like, I think all my skills are maxed. So I start off always with 120 or so coherence and everything like that. So hopefully this video has helped you understand hacking and understanding how to do, like, data relic sites. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.